Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, machine learning, optimization, mechatronics and robotics. In this control engineering tutorial we will learn how to simulate the response of a state-space model for arbitrary control inputs in Python. That is, we will learn how to compute the forced system response in Python. This video tutorial is based on the Python control systems library. This library is a very powerful tool for stability analysis and control system design. Moreover, this library is completely free. If you want to learn control systems and if you cannot afford the MATLAB license that in some cases can cost thousands of dollars, then this library is a good choice for you. Before I start with explanations, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as almost 300 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube page. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Since some of you might not be familiar with the basics of control systems, I first need to provide the answer to the following question. What is the response of a system or what is the response of a state space model? To answer this question, let us consider the following block diagram. And by the way, control engineers really like block diagrams. This block diagram represents a dynamical system. Let us denote such a system by S. The system has an input or inputs denoted by U and it has an output or outputs denoted by Y. If this system is linear, then we can mathematically represent this system in the state space form. X dot is equal to AX plus BU and Y is equal to CX plus DU. Over here U is the input vector, Y is the output vector, X is the state of the system and A, B, C and D are system matrices. The response of this system is the output of the system y in time when we apply a specific function as the control input u. For example, the u function or our input function can be a simple step function represented over here. This function is constant over time. On the other hand, we can also apply a sinusoidal function as our input. For example, the function that looks like this. For this input and, and for this input, we want to compute the response of the system, that is, we want to compute the output y. To compute the response of the system, that is, to compute the vector y for the given control input u, we need to solve the system of differential equations. Luckily, we don't need to solve the system by hand. Python control systems library has a very nice and very easy to use function to compute the state space response of the system. Let's start with Python coding. The first step is to install the Python control systems library. And as you can see over here, I'm using the Anaconda Navigator. And consequently, I will explain you how to do that in Anaconda. You should click on Environments and you should click on Base or Root. And then you should open a terminal. To install the Python Control Systems Library, you just need to type pip or pipe install control. And as you can see over here, I have already installed the Python Control Systems Library. However, in your case, you will see the installation progress over here. Next, close the terminal and open your favorite Python editor. In my case, I'm using the spider environment. 
However, I know that some people use VS Code. Whatever option you choose, it's very important to start your Python editor from Anaconda. This is because you have installed your library in the current environment and consequently you need to start your editor from this environment. Here is my Spider Python editor. I like Spider very much since it reminds me of MATLAB. Namely, you can simply select a piece of code, then you can do a right click and then you can run that selection or line and over here you can see the result. Then you can simply type whose and you can see all the variables in your workspace. This is very important for debugging. Let's erase this part and let's clear our workspace. Cool. The first step is to import the necessary libraries. We are importing the plotting tools and we are importing the NumPy library. And over here, notice this line. I'm importing my control library as CT, and this is the standard convention for importing the control systems library. We usually import this library as CT. Next, over here, I'm defining a function that will be used for plotting the response of the system and for saving the response, or better to say, a graph of the response in a specific file that you can later on include in your scientific report or student project. This function accepts several arguments. The first argument is the time vector, x axis vector. The second argument is y axis vector, that's our response that goes on the y axis. This is the title of our plot. This is the label on the x-axis, this is the label on the y-axis, and this is the name of the file that will be used to store the graph. Usually I'm using the PNG files, however you can also use EPS or PDF files. We simply create a figure, we plot, and then we adjust the figure size, figure font size, as well as labels. And finally over here, we save the graph. Notice over here that I'm using DPI argument of 600. That is, I'm saving the graph by using the resolution of 600 dots per inch. Next, we need to define our state space model. That is, we need to define the model in this form. X dot is A times X plus B times U and Y is equal to C times X plus D times U. That is, we need to define our system matrices A, B, C, and D. To define the system matrices, we use the NumPy arrays. For example, over here, my A matrix is 0, 1, minus 4, minus 2. B matrix is 0, 1, and C matrix is 1, 0. D matrix is equal to 0, which is often the case for control systems. Next, we use this function ct.ss to define our state space model. We simply specify A, B, C, and D matrices, and this structure over here, or better to say this object, system state space, defines our state space model. To simulate the state space model, we need to define the initial condition. Here is our initial condition. We simply assume that x is equal to 0, 0. That is, our vector or state space vector is simply 0, 0. However, over here you can change the values. Let us see our state space model. Evaluate everything starting from here. And let's see the output. Here it is. We have one input, we have one output, and we have two states. And here are the system matrices. Next, let's see how to simulate the step response of our system. To simulate the ste step response, we need to specify the start time, we need to specify the end time, and we need to create the time 
vector. The time vector will start from the start time, it will end at the end time, and it will have number samples between start time and end time. Let's see our time vector, for example, for a relatively small number of data samples. Here it is. Good. 0, 1.111 until 10. Perfect. Let's change back this variable to 500 and then we need to define our control input. Over here I'm computing this step response, consequently I will need a vector of once. This vector will act as a control input. Here it is. Perfect. To compute the state space response, to arbitrary inputs, we need to use this function called forced response. The function takes as the first argument over here our state space model. The second argument is time vector. The third argument is the control input vector. And the last argument is our initial state. To repeat, this function Compute, computes the forced system response, we specify the state space model, time vector, control input, and x0. That is our initial state. Let's see the results. Hmm, nothing happens. Why is that? Well, this function returns this data structure. This data structure is actually the time response data object consisting of the following variables. If we type return simulation.time, we will obtain the time vector used for simulations. And let us modify this code over here by using, for example, only 10 samples, and let's analyze the time again. Here it is. This is precisely the time used for simulation. If we type return simulation.outputs, we will obtain the computed outputs of the system. Here it is. This is the output of the system for our step response. If we want to access our control input, we can simply type return simulation.states. And here is the complete state vector. We have two rows and we have a number of columns. Okay, and finally we can also access the inputs. Here are the inputs. Let's plot the results. To plot the results, we will be using the previously defined function given over here. The first argument is time. The second argument is the output. And over here, I will just give the names on the x-axis, on the y-axis, and I will give the label. And finally, we store our graph in this file. So let's see what happens over here. Voila! Here is the output of the system. Let's improve the resolution of this output by, specify, by specifying more samples in between. And let's execute everything and let's see what happens. Here it is. Now the output is more smoother. This is because we have more samples. Okay, how about plotting the state? Well, we need to access this variable return simulation.states and it's a matrix. If we want to plot, for example, the second state, we will use this line and we will call our function. Let's see the output. Here it is. Here is the second state. And let's plot the first state. Here we'll be specifying 0. And here let's change this. And here is the first state. And that's precisely the output of our system. That was the step response of our system. But how about simulating the response to arbitrary inputs? No problem. We just need to modify the code. Here it is. 
to use the same start and end time and the same time vector. And over here, let us simulate the response of the system to, for example, a harmonic function. Here I'm assuming that the function is sinus, 5 sinus t. So let's write this function. Actually, this is not y. This is u. Input u is sinus 5t plus 0 0.2 cosinus 2t. Let's plot this input. First, let's define the input. I will comment this part since I don't need it. And let's plot this input. Here it is. It's a harmonic function. Then again, we're using the function forced response. We specify the state space model time vector input vector and initial state. And finally, we plot the result. Let's do that. Here's our output and here's our second state. How about computing the response of the system to random inputs? Not a big deal. This is also easy. Over here, I am specifying a random vector as our controlled input. Let's see this vector. Here it is. OK, let's compute the response to this input vector. We just evaluate this piece of code. And let's see the output. OK, here is the output and here is our state. OK, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.